the middle of the lockdown, like everyone else, I had a lot of time to look at myself, how I work, why I work, and the sort of processes that I use to create imagery. I had a meeting with somebody and they did something really interesting with their hand, which I asked them to freeze, hold that there. I ran, got a camera and shot that image. And then that was the start of it. And then I realized that somewhere inside me, there's been a lifelong obsession with hands. And as you can see, I'm starting to use my hands now. So I'm really fascinated with the way that hands play a part in a conversation or an exchange, consciously, subconsciously. I then had a real interesting year or so photographing lots of people's hands. Some people that I knew, strangers, some people I just found them online and invited them to come and, and photograph with me. I didn't necessarily have a collection in my mind at that time. It was just, I had the time. People seemed to be around because the movement was a bit difficult. And it then became obvious, towards the end at least, that this is something that's, it probably has something to say. And then I came up with the name of Hand and, and drew the signature logo from my handwriting and here we are. In, in the sort of write-up about this piece, I mentioned how hands can be used for something brutal, but also something delicate. The same hand could you know, paint something delicately, but also use to smash something or to, to break something. But it's exactly the same hand. And what is it inside us that controls those movements in such a opposing way. So if you put, you know, a knife and fork in your hand, you're typically about to eat something, but you could put a paintbrush in your hand and you're about to paint something. It almost changes who you are as a person. So your brain has to go through this exercise of getting ready for that activity, which we don't think about, but it's there. It's like, it probably takes a split second, but what is that change like? What does that mean inside your head? For me personally, something that's interesting is when I have a camera in my hand, the energy that comes in and goes out of the camera, that exchange, which you don't see, but you know, I'm transmitting something through the camera, but I'm also taking in something through the camera. And the camera is just there doing its job mechanically, but my hand is guiding that piece of equipment to do this quite fascinating exchange. I wouldn't say I have favourites from the collection, but one image that really stands out to me is the image of Tamara. His name is Tamara Gabriel, who's an amazing individual, very interesting life story. What I really love about the image is it's organic in the sense that it's a hand and it's alive and a skin and everything, but it's a very graphical shape. It almost has an architectural feel about it, the way that his hands they almost look like they wouldn't move, if that makes sense to me. They're almost solid. They, they feel sort of sculptural and, and rigid in a way. Even obviously, they're, they're a hand. But there's something about the way that he just put his hands at that moment that always sticks with me. To me, the, the idea of having your hand trait taken is as revealing or could be as some might see it vulnerable as having your traditional portrait taken. I think that there's something that lives within our hands that reveals so much about us, but it just, I guess, almost goes unnoticed because we don't feel the need to really wonder how someone feels by looking at their hand, but that information is there. I really wanted to explore the difference between photographing a hand and a face and what people give you when they let go of this idea that their face will not be seen although the hands are showing you as much as the face would. But to the sitter, I guess, sometimes they don't feel that so much. Obviously, because I am actually a, you know, a photographer for a living, um, I did have a few people ask me to photograph their hands commercially for, as a commission. And that solidified this word of hand trait to me a bit more because it, it, it was something that you could say, you could ask for. You could say, could I have my hand trait taken or created. It seems to be something that people don't have a problem with understanding the idea, even though I guess most people, if they say they're having their picture taken, they expect to see their face. But equally, I think lots of people are open to having an image of their, their hand at the end of the session. And if not, maybe we can photograph their hand and their face and give them the traditional side, cover that one as well. This is it's a really interesting time for me right now because I am actually in a state of transformation myself. I've spent many years shooting for 
I wouldn't say in a standard way, but shooting in a formula which is somebody comes to me with a need which I sometimes frame as a problem and I help them solve that problem. I give them back the content, the imagery, typically what I've shot, and then that's the job. It's done. Now what it feels like is people are asking me to help them with the broader spectrum. So maybe where those images are going to be used, getting involved in that side of the project or business or whatever it may be. And also influencing that, putting, bringing teams together, really making sure that when the images are supplied, they fit more seamlessly into the structure of what they were created for.